Alright, I just finished putting the top together, so I'm going to explain how I did it. Uh, the steps I did exactly the same as for the rails that I did. Uh, the only difference was cutting to width and length obviously is a little bit different. Uh, so for width, I did is all 5 inches, uh, both sides and along on your inside uh, rail here. This is uh, 5 inches as well. Uh, length for here is 45 inches. And right here in the middle piece is 11 inches uh, in the middle. And once I had it all, thickness is still 1 inch. And once I had everything um, all together, I positioned it what I wanted to be on top. And then I'll lift it up here and just kind of show you that um, it's all done uh, with the Craig jig here on uh, both sides just to support it. And um, that's pretty, pretty much it for right now. The next step is going to be kind of figuring out um, basically the distance overhang that I want. And then I'm going to have to router just a little bit out. Um, most glass uh, that you can get at glass places are about 5 millimeter thick. So I'm going to go down about 5, five millimeters or so. And just a little bit just to go around with the router. Um, so the glass will be able to sit sit nice and flush in and on the bottom obviously you can see here that I've got pocket hole joinery I would have to fill each and every hole when I paint out white which is a lot of work and I'm not going to do that I'm basically going to be putting um, a bottom piece just on the bottom of the top basically uh, plywood or so and I'm going to stain that the same color because uh, when I put the glass on top, it's a clear glass, but I'm going to be doing two palm leaves basically in this direction of glass etching, and um, they'll really pop and make it stand out. So I'll show you the next step on uh, routering. All right, so the next step on routering, I have already have done it, but I'm going to show you guys what I did. I basically took my square that I have here. It's got a your local hardware store. I got mine, happened to got mine at Home Depot. And there's millimeters um, on it, and I basically set it up to five millimeters, just a just a hair um, over, just a little bit. Um, the reason for that is is just in case uh, when I order the glass, which I always order my glass before I stain it. So if I have to make any changes or whatnot, uh, then I can go ahead and uh, router a little bit deeper if I have to. So I just did a, just a, a tiny bit. And basically all I did is once I had it set, I started in this position and went in and then just went all the way down in a clockers motion and I just routed all the way around the whole, whole unit. And basically now, if you order glass with round, as you can see it's round, you're going to pay a little extra money because of the waste factor. So I'm just going to do nice and square. And what I'm going to do is I just lined up these little joints here. So I'm just going to take a chisel and just straightly go down, hammer it a bit, and knock off the corners so that it basically pops right out. I'm going to do that to all four edges. And then they'll be ready to go uh, for inserting glass. And then the next step will be inserting the uh, panel bar at the uh, bottom. Okay, so I cut the backing just out of plywood veneer happened to what I had left over. Um, basically the dimensions of this is it's 13 inches this way and 36 and a half long. And I kind of just roughly placed it um, just to level up just to level or so where I'm gonna put it. And I just had to cut off the corners because on my actual table the uh, regular um, in the corners it was routered on an angle so I had to just make this and the points were touching. Okay, this is the part that I'm talking how angle it is just because it, these were legs based on the other table screwed in which I'm not screwing on them in because I screwed on the sides so the piece of wood that I had um, obviously just had to knock the corner off just so it doesn't touch on a 90 degree angle. So basically now that I got everything kind of lined up, I'm just going to put a little bead of glue all the way around. Just because when you're stapling it down, and I'm using about half inch uh, staples. And I'm just putting just some glue. The glue is just there to stick and the nails are just 
supposed to be just to support it. You don't want too, too much glue because you don't want it all oozing out on you. There we go. So now I'm just going to take this. And I already have, I lined it up so that's how I know how I'm kind of going off of it here from what I had. I'm just going to be lining everything up here. Okay, so we look good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically staple in all four corners and then later on go, go around because you just want to make sure that it's nice and tight where you want it. So basically then what you want to do is just go around and just put just a couple more and then it's basically all done. The next step is pretty much sanding everything down and I haven't figured out for the top what kind of router um, verge I'm going to do yet and I'll show you how to router the top next. Okay so I did some sanding just with about some 80 grit uh, just to smooth things out a little bit. I got to smooth some stuff more out and I did the router here. Um, basically I just have a 40, 45 uh, angle bit just in here. I'm not sure what size size it is. And um, basically I just set it up just so it's right touching the bottom part. And, uh, and basically you just want to start with your end grain here first. That way if any chip outs or tear out happen um, then I'll be nice and smooth with your grain. So I basically just started in, plunged in, and just went all the way across to the end and did end grain again on the other side and then I did on this side with the grain. So that's basically on routering the edge that I did. And um, basically it's coming along. So now I'm going to just sand with 100 and then 150 I'm going to end with. Uh, so that's basically going to be nice and smooth. Right, I just wanted to just note um, here that after I was done routering the top and finished sanding it, um, I just realized it just looked a little too thick. Let's see if I can go in here a little closer. So I just did a quarter inch round over on the bottom and uh, it just kind of gives it that little less uh, thickness here um, of the board not so thick kind of looking. So I just wanted to note that I just did a little quarter inch uh, round over and I think it, it looks uh, really, really well. It doesn't give it so much of that squareness look to it. Alright, so this is my table so far. I just finished painting it. Uh, it took me four coats. Uh, I ended up just using, I'm going to show you right over here, uh, just Bare Ultra Semi Gloss I had lying around. It's exterior. You don't need exterior because it's just an inside coffee table. Um, but because I just happened to have that left over, I figured I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on this project. Uh, so I just used what I had left lying around. Uh, so it turned out really good. Four coats, like I said, I needed it. Um, and you don't even notice which leg pretty much had a, a, the damage to it with all the nice putting and sanding. Uh, I think it's going to look really, really sharp with the white and dark walnut on top. So I just finished ordering my glass and it's going to take a couple of days. So I'm just going to wait for the glass. Um, I think it's a good idea before you go ahead and stain it and what happens if your glass you never know if what happens if they cut it you know or if your measurements are not 100 percent correct that way then um your glass will fit in perfectly then so i'm just gonna wait till my glass is in test it all fit and then basically we'll be staining the top so this is the top again i'm really happy i'm really excited about this like a kidney candy store here i'm um, just waiting for the finishing touches and i think it's gonna look awesome all right, for the tabletop on staining, I did the same method that I did on refinishing uh, the table. And I used Old Master's Gel Stain Dark Walnut and the Varthian Professional Clear Finish Semi-Gloss. And I basically, here's the table, I put in the glass and it fit perfectly that I ordered the dimensions for. And I uh, basically did uh, one coat of dark walnut on the bottom and the top needed two coats and I just did three coats of the clear finish 
and it looks amazing. I'm very happy with it. The reason why I had to do two coats um, was because this is maple plywood, so it ended up tinting a bit darker. Uh, the construction lumber ended up going a little bit lighter in some areas, so it uh, turned out uh, really, really, really well.